One of the last times I'm going to do this for this year. Yeah, until the fall. Anyways, man, this one was hard to watch uh, because it was essentially a quick fest. You knew what was going on before, if you were honest with yourself as an Eagles fan, um, before this event occurred. A massacre that was predicted. Rare, but it does happen. What's up, it's your boy Centron coming back at you with another analysis video. And I kid you not, that's my real name. Damn, speed. Anyways, I see speed, I show speed. Yeah, you know, you know the dude. Eagles film review. Hubris and arrogance have been the fatal flaw of this coaching staff, and this has been endemic of this unit all year long. You can see it. There is no plan. Oh no, 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 no. There is a plan. It's just full of pride. Yeah. I mean, one of the seven deadly sins, right? Anyways, let's get into it. And <laughs> it's just seeing Nick Sirianni's smiling face over here just pisses me off all the more. Like <laughs> with this article, Ugh, it's really, you want to give him a quick hot All right. Um. Yeah, definitely a brutal way to end the season. And this guy's smiling over here like a dunce, a fucking moron. Him being complicit as well. You know, his con contributions, having his cookie. You know, his fingers in the cookie jar, meddling. Trying to touch the pie before it's done. Stop. Get the fuck out of the kitchen, man. It ain't done yet. Anyways, um, the offense. Yeah, um, their plan with dealing with uh, the blitz. Before we get to that, third down. This third down play here. Um, their answer to the blitz that they knew that we were going to bring. That they knew that, you know, this is the third most blitzing team in the league. And it's third and two. It's not like we have to have the world. We just need two yards. Um, and, you know, three. You're telling me you don't have one single play in your playbook that can beat a blitzing, uh, a blitz on third and two. And your answer is four verts. Okay, let's look at this idiotic bullshit. Four vertical routes. One, two, three, and four. Um, okay, you have the back motion in the place. It doesn't really fucking matter. They're bringing, you know, five or six you know, uh, potentially more. And instead of going to the swath of the field, you're going to the fucking sidelines. Dallas got a low percentage play that, uh, in regards to having a chance to succeed. And you can see, like, after this play, like, Dallas got, he didn't, it was, you know, the first drive of the game. Too hard for him to show that bad of body language, but he's, he has no confidence that we're going to succeed. Come off the field and it just got worse as the game wore on. The players look more and more dejected because their coaches, the people that are supposed to be giving them the keys to solving their problems and dealing with their offense or defense, have no answers. This bullshit. And this is the professional level? High schools would look more competent in having a, a high school level coach. All right, next drive. Um, third and short again. And here they go to Dallas Goddard. But yeah, again, like with above, no bunches, no motion. I mean, the, the weak little motion with the running back, that's a formality, you know, um, just to check, you know, whatever. It doesn't factor into the equation have a, have a heavy amount unless it's like an actual motion that, you know, post play, he goes off into a route or something like that. Give him a head start, you know, uh, to create a rub or something like that. But you see here, this is a plan again. Free rushers, Jalen's face, is, the goal is... For them, it's just, just get the ball to the open receiver. But yeah, they, they don't do anything here to help Dallas Goddard out in his route. You see him go straight to you know the sideline. You know, nothing stacked here, which would help him, you know, with the defender having to deal with traffic at the fight through it. He can just narrow in on him, and he has even a, another guy being able to crash in, come in, um, maybe fight him for that first yard uh, to, for, uh, to keep him from getting the first down. The first time yardage. And this is the professional level. A game plan that you spent a week on. You actually spent a fucking week devising this bullshit and putting it together. And putting this out there on the field. Incredible. Incredible. And I'm not talking about Nick's, Nick Cannon's company. <laughs> All right, the RPO game. Here's my theory with the RPOs. I really feel like they wanted to um, not to repeat. They wanted to, uh, um, to stray away from these because 
they felt like defenses would latch onto them. And if we couldn't come back to have something to come back to, then um, it'd be a huge, um, it'd be a huge hole in our game. We wouldn't be have something in our pocket. But if you're not going to use it at all, it doesn't matter. Use something. You know, if it's a retread from last year, use it. I mean, they, they could have built off of this. Could have forced defense and instead of having defenses dictate to you like the blitz and you have no answer for it. You dictate the defense and then you make them change. You force them to come out of a two, uh, two high safety shell to a single coverage. And then you get the looks you want. You get what you want in the end anyway. The explosive plays instead of chasing it. All right, um, let's look at the RPO. And in this case, it worked. The overly aggressive Bucks defense comes flying up to support the run, and you go over top of the heads. And he, look at that, explosive play. Oh, what do we, what do we have there, explosive play? Didn't force it, just let it naturally happen. The arrogance. And thinking that you're just going to enforce your will on people. These guys get paid too, and they do film study. And you're going to ignore that fact. This is, for me, damning, more damning than anything that Nick would allow, not just allow, to put your fucking rubber stamp of approval on this and send it out there into the battlefield. Supposedly ready and tested. This fails the eye test. If you were, I mean, you, they had to have been doing this in practice. You've got to be kidding me. That you thought this was this would actually su succeed. <laughs> um, yeah, it's frustrating, man. They think just putting your uh, your wide receiver one on one is just gonna work. You gotta have you have to have something actually backing up your gold for it to be worth some shit. Like right. bad design. You're counting on Devontae Smith to just go out there and make a play, but he doesn't have a chance. And it makes Jalen look bad, too. Even with AJ, we would have been amateurs because we, we were just like, hey, AJ, you're better than most of these guys. Go out there and win. Devontae, you're better than most of these guys. Go out there and win. And Devontae had a record, uh, playoff record for receiving and 148 for a, an Eagles receiver. And it, it feels like in some small corner of my mind, they're happy and content with that. They can... Look and say, hey, our offense wasn't that bad this year. Look at the amount of receiving yards that uh, Devonta Smith had. <laughs> Netflix. It's a joke. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 look at it here, man. Nothing creative. Um, look, the corner doesn't back off because why would he? Just stands his ground. He doesn't have to respect the vertical. And because you know the pressure is coming out. Unless, you know, it's just it's gotta be a fly route. You know, and they didn't, you know, call that. So the odds of this being anything other than he could just squat in the route because he pretty much knew what was coming. Predictable. Another problem with the offense this year. And yeah, the screenplay, uh, bad coaching, bad coaching, but not just the design, coaching, the way you're coaching these guys to, to, uh, go out there and deploy into the, uh, play, the design play is bad. Look at this here. Motion that does nothing actually draws the defender in and makes it a harder throw. So, I mean, like, yeah, just the design there. I could just talk about that one flaw. You had something that aided the opponent there. <laughs> it's an offense, not defense, right? Like, just, you, you, you can't chalk it up to anything but a willing, full stubbornness. All right, next play. Um, yeah, I heard idiots. All week talking about hurts this and hurt that hurts that. It's like me giving you a poorly written recipe and then you blame me for the results of what I cooked. It's your fucking recipe. I'm just following the fucking instructions. And why should I, as a third year starting quarterback, fourth year player, have to do your job for you? 
If I have to audible out of every play that we have, what the fuck are you doing? And granted, he's not Peyton Manning. It's not Tom Brady. Um, but who's to say that they would have been that comfortable doing that that early in their career? Peyton, to some degree, I mean, I mean I'm not going to argue with that, but they, they weren't dealing with incompetence from their coordinators calling their, uh, their plays. They were being aided by them. Not shackled. So they have a 6-2 look, three DBs only. This would be where you, you throw the ball. Uh, 12 personnel, and we didn't notice. Or we, or we didn't care to notice. Throw that to, you know, that, that, uh, that vertical route to um, Devonta Smith there. And, hey, it works because, look, you had single high coverage you, you wanted. You, um, well, no, the, the, the DB, and yeah, the safety, I, I don't know why he's looking in the backfield. You actually got, you know, a, a gap from him there. He put himself in bad position. You know, if the corner doesn't make that, that's a touchdown. Make the tackle, that's a touchdown right there. So, um, the adjustments, yeah, they were, they were non-existent. Terrible. So they played in this overly aggressive 6-2 front. Only, you know, three defensive backs. That would have been your chance to, like you said, play action from the pistol, but we don't, we don't do that. Um, but you, at least at the very least, use 12 personnel more. But nope. They were trying, like, oh, here's our chance. Here, oh, we're going to placate our fans here. We're going to run it. <laughs> in this situation, in a stacked box. So let's, let's get the play. So, yeah, you can see here the line is stacked against the run. I mean, there's, they, all the guys are occupied. Let's go back here for a second. All the guys are occupied. Now, even if he picks this or this, this gap, he's going to flow here. It's going to flow here. There's nothing open there. And you want him to create some magic. Or just do it for the sake of, hey, you ran the ball. And then the guys can pursue for the backside because there's just, there's so much clutter in there that, you know, someone's liable to get lost or someone pursuing for the backside that's unblocked. <laughs> what a sh show. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, this, is, this is what's funny. People are like, oh, they don't, you know, Eagles don't have a plan for the, plan for the blitz. Um, even if Jalen was to make an audible, let's just say he made an audible and he throws the ball and... Um, it gets picked. That's on Jalen, right? Because he it, it's doubly so on Jalen because he all audible of that play. If you're not being his eyes, his extra set of eyes and ears and brain to process off the field, then what are you doing? What are you actually getting paid for? Because you're not assisting him in um, making those adjustments and going to the empty areas of the field that the, of the defense, defensive players are vacating when they blitz. You're a detriment to him. So, I mean, it explains to me, like, why um, we'll see later, like, play happens. That Why that happened to me. Completely understandable. Not excusable, but understandable. So, let's see. Um, yeah, the, the plan for the Blitz, one-on-one -on -one matchups. You, hey, you guys got to go out there and win. Even though we're down a star player, um... We're down even like a backup who replaced him, and he's an older guy. Go out there and make a play, regardless, irregardless of the situation. So, yeah, people are like this is this is the play, and it just reeks. No, it's covered, plastered, candy coated in areas. Yeah, look at that. It's just it's a desperate heave. That's not an offense. This is Madden. A five year old runs these kind of plays in Madden. You want to tell me that an actual professional offensive coordinator of an offense in a National Football League put this game plan together and then you think I'm sick in the head if I'm going to believe that bullshit. Yeah, look at this one again. Vertical routes. Where does Hurts have to go? Where? They're not stretching the field horizontally. 
Look at this area here. They didn't have anybody running into this area here. I mean, the coaching staff failed him and the offense once again. And this isn't just a single, single issue. This has been there in bits and pieces all year. Just because we were able to have some success, I think we were still a top 10 offense this year. With this level of coaching, it's, it's, a, it's amazing, actually. It's miraculous that we were able to field a top 10 unit with this kind of trash being put out there. All right. Um, yeah, I think this is the safety. And no, this isn't a safety. This is their idea of dealing with the blitz. Okay, nothing there. So let's just check it down. So yeah, you like you said here, you're finally running out of ideas. So now you're just gonna concede. Like I get that the players were showing that they were, you know, giving up in their body language because they're dealing with the extenuating circumstances. A defensive coordinator that should never have been out there calling some of his plays when the uh, engineer of that that defense is upstairs. But to concede, to give up, and just like, oh, okay, just, just call a check down and say, it's the best shot we have. That's the reason. Just This play alone is the reason for Nick Sirianni to be fired. Fired. Yeah, and this is the, 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 uh, the play for Hurts here, the safe, uh, safety. But look at, again, vertical routes, running straight. Nothing here in these areas of the field. Wide swat. Look at that. Almost two wide swaths of field uncovered. And untouched by anybody. You would have thought it was California in the 1850s. That area is clear for uh, gold mining. <laughs> hey, you see why he gets frustrated and think, hey, I have to do this myself. I have to, I have to make a play. Because if I don't, I, if I don't hold on to the ball until the absolute last second, then nothing's going to happen. He, he's desperate here. It's a screaming cry for help. And there's none coming. What a sad setup for our quarterback. Huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, look at this, this, this pass here. And look, we actually did something. We, we attacked the middle of the field. Something that we hadn't really done much of this game. A handful of times. Wow, and look what happens. And I, you have someone like here to hold hold this player here. A motion that actually, you know, like works, a fake out. A modicum of creativity. And look what happens. Just off of that sprinkle, sprinkle amount. <laughs> and then what they do after that is that you go completely away from that for the mundane, droll, basic. You don't want a data model. You want basic bitches. Let's be honest. All the while crying like you, you do. All right. So, yeah, that's the end of it. But sad, man. You go out like this in a playoff game. Or if you forget everything that happened in the regular season, this is your chance to rectify that by going out there and winning. Winning and move, advances the next round. This is why, like, this is why uh, Tuna, Big Tuna said. This is why you play all them games. This is why you lift all the weights. This is why you do all that shit. They said, you were like, playoffs? Playoffs? We can't even win in that game. All right, on to other stuff, man. Brian Johnson gets a third head coaching uh, interview. So contrary to fans' opinions that he's just a numb nuts, he actually, you know, um, has some talent in He's sought after in the league, so he interviewed with Atlanta, and I don't, I don't, I don't think he's gonna get any of these jobs unless you know chips fall into place. I think Bill Belichick might end up going to the Falcons. He's in the second round with them right now uh, of interviewing, and the Panthers. I think they're kind of probably gonna try to um, get with offensive coordinator for the Lions, Ben uh, Ben Johnson, the other Johnson. Enough talk about Johnsons. Pause. But that tells you that you know. The fans' opinion and the his opinion, um, the opinion of him around the league do not match. And for me, 
who's to blame for this? It's not his brainchild, not his offense. We didn't see inklings of Florida or um, Utah. This is Nick Sirianni's offense. It's, he called it his baby. It is. It's hard to run another man's kingdom because you're going to want to do things your way. You have your own policies. You have your own way of doing things. All right. Report, Eagles senior offensive assistant drawing interest from Bears. So um, Marcus Brady, a guy we brought on last year to be a uh, consultant, has been moved up to this title. But I'm telling you that we have talent, man. It's just, it's just so sad that we can't maximize it. it. It's all the more frustrating when you think about it. Not saying that we're world beaters. Not saying we would have an offense like 2017 or, or last year, but certainly better than this. I mean, the functionality. All right. Um, next up, Jeffrey Lurie, Nick Sirianni is scheduled to meet for Eagles exit interview on Friday. So they delayed it. Um, I mean, this tells me that, I mean, like, no, I, I, like I said, I think if he takes to um, the things that... Um, I mean, yeah, he has to lay out his game plan. If he takes to the things that, that uh, let Lurie, he gives him a good plan, then Lurie will be amenable to, you know, some of his ideas if it's a solid plan. But even then, I think there's going to be some pushback. How he might be sitting on, in on this meeting. And then putting feelers out there is him maybe gathering some info details so that he can, can be prepared. You know, I got this guy. How about this guy? Some suggestions. Because he has to go in there with the damn plan. But, um... If he doesn't, if he doesn't like the plan, and if Nick pushes back, he could be out of here. I mean, he probably will be out of here. But I see him, you know, twenty twenty four being his last chance, and um, Lurie being like, hey, um, I mean, they might meet halfway. I I'll, I'll choose defensive coordinator. Maybe we can stay another year with Brian Johnson, but you have to have a good, very good damn plan plan in place. Because what's apparent is that. Another repeat cannot happen. Um, the stale offense that you brought to us is stale bread. Throw that sh out in the trash. Don't ever bring it up again. Don't ever buy it again. So it's going to be interesting. Um, but Howard Roseman, um, he, yeah, he, he doesn't want to get off his Howard, and Louis doesn't want to give take away from it either. So it, it, it's it's a tough ask, man. I can get into that later, but. Let's just get into our last topic today. All right, this is not surprising, but the disconnect between Eagles defensive players and coaches is startling. So, um, in short, the Eagles players thought it was a big deal for them to change, or a lot of them did. Defensive coordinators, the Eagles thought, hey, no problem. And then it blew up in the Eagles' faces, the coaches in, uh, who were for this, if there were any, and the management who decided to, you know, pretty much pull the rug from out underneath uh, Sean Desai, which was unfair. Let the man rock with his ship. If it's going down, let him go down with it. But nah, they tried to put, install another captain, and the ship still went down anyways. So um, for them, like, they're telling them that it's difficult. Tell them it's going to be discord. Because Tyretic's a vet. He's had nearly a, a new DC um, every year, but even he, you know he still said it's hard. But for the younger guys, it's going to be even harder. And then you see you know coach like Denard Wilson, who should have been the defensive coordinator, not be given a chance because they want to run the system that's in place, bend but don't break, and to see the effect that he's having on the defense there as a secondary coach um, in uh, in Baltimore. Ugh. So, I mean, like, yeah. The coaches downplaying their concerns, basically, you know, blew up in their faces. And it's not, the Eagles, you know, the players talk about the struggles, but you, sh you're, you should know what's going on. Not just should know, you should have answers for what's going on. And the fact that you didn't, and... Yeah, I mean, like, it, it, it was just no surprise. Not just for the actual aspect of doing the job, but, like, the atmosphere. 
it ain't like for me, like, why would I want to come here when you look as panicky as you do? When you were this, you were 10 and one and then 10 and three and you pull this kind of move. That's a, that's a, the move of a dying franchise, at least for that season, a flailing franchise. And then, a successful one that, like this has won 34 games in the last three years. Does this? 33? 34? All right, anyways. Let's get a bite here, man. Um, the energy of my video is different. But hey, we need some levity, gravity here because things aren't the best right now. Anyways, we're going to get a bite here. But you're not even watching, though. But it's all good because I love making these videos and I love talking about the Eagles. So we're going to chunk deuces. But as always, as always, it's Fly Eagles Fly and let's motherfucking go! Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs, or other social media.